Coming to you live from the RMIT studios in the heart of Melbourne, the city that thinks swine flu should be pronounced in pig Latin. It's Studio A with Dave Thornton. On tonight's show, radio host and comedian Tracy Bartram. From brand new Channel 31 comedy postcode, we have Dragon and Rowdy. Comedy from Anyone for Tennis. And music from Red Ink. And of course, regular guest, Jess Harris. But please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the host of Studio A, Mr. Dave Thornton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hello and welcome down here to Studio A. Again, live here at 8.30 on a Monday evening. Thanks everyone for tuning in there on Analog Television Land and everyone here for turning up who's in the audience, guys. Uh, is everyone excited post Night of Nights after the Logies? Anyone want to? <laughs> One person, all right. Uh, this is going to go well. Uh, yeah, um, oh, before we kick off too, a friend of mine had a bet to see whether I could still fit into my old school uniform and uh, whew, looks like I just won 20 bucks. But... Uh, <laughs> Before we do go on, guys, obviously the TV Week uh, Logie Awards won last night and, you know, sure, Studio A didn't get invited. I mean, who cares? We didn't, we didn't want to go. Um, we don't do TV for awards anyway. I mean, that's ridiculous. We do it for the love of being just on television, giving you people entertainment. You know, that's what we do for a living. What about the antennas? That's a good question. I, uh, oh, look at that. Uh, seems we've got the uh, Channel 31 award there for... Most outstanding show. I didn't ever realise realise it was there, but um, <laughs> here we are. Um, but no, the Logies won last night, and didn't it feel like the whole 51 years were just put into that two and a half hours? <laughs> it was like hanging out with a 51-year-old, you know. It was like it just wasn't quite fashionable. It was just past its best, and you kind of wondered why it stayed up after 10:30. Like. <laughs> How that feel about it, you know? And obviously we got to see Gretel Colleen again. It was not. She... <laughs> Sounds like she's got a relative in the audience. I, uh... She obviously, she had a bit of a hiatus. She was away, big brother. It was about two years ago. She got off the screen. She decided to come back for the Logie Awards. And she brought with her a new look, which they presented on the night. In case any of you guys out there haven't seen it, we'll just flash it up on screen now. Uh, this is what she looked like, which was quite nice. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? it kind of, it's kind of weird. It kind of makes you... Oh, Kind of makes you think she looks like, oh, who is it? Who would you look like? It, uh... Oh, yeah, there we go, yeah. <laughs> let's do the comparison. Come on, let's have a look at those two. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that is nice. Live long and prosper, Gretel. But, uh... <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Obviously, what I like about the Logies as well is you get to catch what American celebrity we get to come down. And uh, we got Carson from Crew Up and the Straight Guy, which was, which was nice. He, uh, <laughs> he came down, he graced our screens. I think the first thing he actually said on the red carpet, he goes, I don't recognise any of these celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> Those in glass chiffon houses, Carson. I, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, what did Channel 9 thinking? Like, Gretel hasn't been on the TV for two years. He hasn't been on television for like four years. Like, Channel 10 doesn't even repeat his show. They repeat every other show bar that one. Got to the point where I thought maybe like Klinger from MASH was going to like hand out the gold Logie, you know? And kind of got to that point. But the weird thing was, he came out with a statement and he said, the Logie, oh God, it kind of looks like an alien holding a suitcase. <laughs> no, it doesn't. This looks like an alien holding a suitcase. If anyone wants to write into the age of the Herald Sun complaining about that, we need the publicity. So, uh, <laughs> crack on about it. Now, getting to a bigger global scale, obviously the swine flu, the pandemic's been taking over. Are we all worried? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. I, uh, it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? Like, no one really does care. It seems even professionals are coming out today and saying that they, they overplayed it a little bit. It wasn't as drastic as they initially thought. Uh, but luckily enough, in Mexico, a shot has been invented that hopefully can combat the pandemic as it's come out, which is a world first, which is nice. Just, it's the first time a shot's ever come out of Mexico that hasn't been followed by a slice of lemon and a line of salt. <laughs> so that, that's quite nice. It's, and then lastly, guys, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it seems uh, we all know we like to think we live in the world's most livable city. We don't know who judges it. <laughs> We don't care. Melbourne just wears it with pride, you know? We're kind of like Stephen Bradbury. We don't know how we got to the podium, but God damn it, we'll take it, all right? <laughs> but it's come out again. I don't know from what source, but it has come out again. 
And unfortunately, did we make the top five of Liverpool cities? No. Did we make top ten? No. We got 18th. We got 18th. And what? I oh, know. And what, what rubbed salt into the wound? Sydney got 10th. Sydney. Sydney. I, I, our mortal enemy, Sydney. I thought I'd never say this in my life, but fingers crossed next year, I hope we get another Cronulla. And uh, <laughs> we, can just, we can just piggyback them right, right to victory. But um, God, how's it? I thought that joke was a little off colour, but everyone went, yeah, Sydney, <laughs> stick it to them. Um, but guys, uh, on the show tonight, we're lucky enough, we've got Tracy Bartram. You may remember her from Fox FM. She's also on Mix FM. She's come down. We're going to have a talk to her. I was talking to her in the green room before. She's lovely. It's great. She's going to be here at the desk. We've also got... Dragon and Rowdy, they're going to be coming down and talking about... <laughs> a lot of fans. Uh, they're going to be coming down and talking about their brand new show on Channel 31. We've also got comedy from Anyone for Tennis, one of the best comedy duos to come out since Mel and Koshy. They are good. And uh, we're also going to be finishing off with music from Red Ink and, of course, our regular Jess Harris. Now, guys, like we do every time, we know that the hardest working men in show business are here for you this evening. So, guys, put your human hands together and welcome the fantastic Studio A band. <laughs> Sorry, the award's in the way. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. Uh, let's get serious for a moment. I was talking before about the pandemic, the, the swine flu. It's sweeping the world, it seems. You know, the symptoms, I don't know, from what I can gather, they're basically just like normal flu, OK? Um, evidence has proven you know, it could be deadly. Specialists are saying that it's a new disease. I think viewers were fine, actually, though. From this startling 1978 footage we found in the Studio A library, I'm not sure if the disease is new as we think. Thank you, Dr. Danny Zuko. I... You know what's interesting I found from looking at that clip on YouTube? That Russell Brandt got his uh, fashion sense from Olivia Newton-John in the last scene of Grease. Check it out, people. But, uh, Personally, I don't think this swine flu is all it's cracked up to be. I mean, the odds of a first world country like Australia being infected with this kind of disease is not a massive issue. And Sorry, Oliver, what is it? Well, Dave, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little worried. <laughs> this is a pandemic, a pan, not an epi. It's a pandemic. Who's the pan? He's the pan. Pan on the run. What a pan, what a pan, what a pan, what a mighty good pan. A mighty, mighty good pan. What's your point, Oliver? Well, look, I'm scared, Dave. I don't want swine flu. I don't want to have to wipe the noses of these infected pigs. Uh, Ollie, I don't think you've got all the facts, to be honest with you. The symptoms aren't from sick pigs. That's not how it works. Well, I... Look, uh, Sorry, Oliver. Sorry, Dave. I just want to butt in here and just assure everyone on the show tonight uh, that uh, old Chan man here, I can't physically get swine flu because I'm Jewish. <laughs> That's right. Swine flu isn't kosher. <laughs> Plus, I'm circumcised. <laughs> All right, Chan man, the Jewish has nothing to do with swine flu. And pretty much you made that up. Well, I know for a fact you're not Jewish. And telling us you're circumcised, I don't think it's got anything to do with anything. That's a fair point. Uh, to be honest, that was just an elaborate setup to get that last bit of info out. Uh, <laughs> that number on the screen, thank you uh, to the ladies of Melbourne. Thank you. Call now. This is turned into a late night infomercial. Look, Oliver, seriously, don't worry, mate. There's nothing that's going to happen to you. It's going to be fine. Look, I just don't want to take any chances there, Dave. I can't in this day and age. Hey, Dave! Oh, tell me, what do you want? I got it. Bad case of the swine. Bad case of the swine. How do you know that you've got a case of the swine flu? Because, well, I mean, I've, I've started kind of questioning this reality that we live in. Like, is this all really real? Or is this just some elaborate computer program that makes us think that this is real? Tommy, have you been watching The Matrix again? I may have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that doesn't mean that you've got the swine flu. That just means you're an impressionable idiot. <laughs> but are you really 
saying that, or is that like some kind look, of... Look, look, seriously, mate, you can take the blue pill or the red pill, you're still an idiot. Um, <laughs> Oliver, seriously, you've got nothing to worry about, OK, mate? Dave, look, I tell you what, mate, I'm not going to take any chances with this disease ravaging my gorgeous body, all right? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, you... Dave? Uh, Dave? This is Kushler product, production assistant. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> I think I've got the swine flu as well. I'm feeling like really sweaty and weak and I've got this like ill feeling in my stomach. No, see so you just sat through the entire Logies. Bam. Uh, <laughs> look, seriously, Oliver, you have nothing to worry about, I'm sure. Dave, don't care, mate. I don't care. I'm on level six medical alert here, OK? Is that cooking oil? Yes, it certainly is. <laughs> well, Dave, you see, your ham slides right off the cooking tray when I use this stuff, so I suppose the swine flu is going to do the exact same thing. <laughs> Look, if anyone's watching out there, anyone's actually in the audience, don't worry about the swine flu. It's all under control. If you have any symptoms, you just need to take two tablets that I know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are these, Panadol? Cyanide. And if, uh, pain, <laughs> if pain persists, you just have to see a mortician. It's going to be fine. The understood. We didn't hear that. It's, <laughs> it's time for a break now. We're just going to have to cool the jets on the yuck yucks for a while now, guys. We're going to go to an ad break, but we'll be back with Tracy Bartram and, of course, the lovely Jess Harris. Don't go away. We're the studio. <laughs> Now it's time to introduce someone we all know and love here at Studio A, the lady who can look into the future, yet she still fails to mention when I'm about to walk into something. Please welcome Studio A regular, Ms. Jess Harris. Hello. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to what you got for this week. Yeah, yeah. Well, Could... predicting. Sorry, I can't be too specific with you. I still have to leave surprises for you. Yeah, I'll Because that's what you're to... saying, I don't help you out when you're going to walk into things. Yeah, look, it, if I have to look like an idiot, so be it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> hopefully you can save me from looking like an idiot I this will. week. This is Miss Jarris. Miss Jess Harris. Oh, God. See? Where are we on that one? I know. Miss Jess Harris for the week ahead. <laughs> Got to laugh, though. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so I'm here predicting, forecasting, giving you helpful hints on how to best plan your week. Starting from today, the 4th, till Sunday, the 10th of May, which will be Mother's Day. OK, so a lot of mothers will end up crying and drinking alone in the linen cupboard because their <laughs> adult children have completely forgotten about the day. My advice is, even if they say they don't want to fuss, it's a lie, OK? Avoid a drunken, abusive voicemail from mum. Get out a bit of pasta, a bit of food dye, make her a necklace, it goes a long way. <laughs> in Hollywood gossip, David Duchovny will be photographed rollerblading solo. Beware, this will be a depressing sight. While Lauren Conrad from The Hills may or may not be seen out in an LA hotspot with actor Paulie Shaw, star of the hit classic Encino Man. <laughs> and on the move next week, the perfect time to get a traffic-free drive into work will be between 3 and 5 a.m. Be careful not to ride the clutch when taking roundabouts, though. And on public transport... <laughs> Wear a face mask to avoid catching the swine flu, but more importantly, to avoid catching commuters' bad attitudes. <laughs> Pack a good book and a gun, just in case. <laughs> I'm not sure why, I'm just picking up, take a gun. <laughs> in health, sleeping in the nude may increase your chances of early hair loss. <laughs> so be careful there. Next week's warning. At a school fete this weekend, a teenage prank will turn horribly wrong. Brownies laced with dope will be sold, causing several mothers to skinny dip in the school pool. <laughs> and numerous kinder students claiming they can talk to animals, releasing the petting zoo. Now, the last thing people want to see right now is pigs wandering the streets, so be warned, it's going to be a minor scare. In fashion fads and trends, damaged men are back in fashion. Yes. The more depressed, heartbroken and moody you are, the more girls will want to save you. But the colour burgundy and all things reversible are well and truly out. 
And next week in numbers, 28,000 Australians will not get enough protein. 48 birds will be killed using only 24 stones, <laughs> with only seven, <laughs> only seven poly waffle chocolate bars being purchased next week, making their future on the market look dicey. <laughs> and our emotional forecast for the coming week. This week looks to be consistently fine. Most days just sailing on by, no real ups and downs. For most, this is going to be a really nice week. But for those of you who thrive on drama and chaos, this week may be challenging. And it may cause you to start rumours, steal from loved ones, pick fights with strangers, just to have something negative to carry on about. So if next week is a nightmare for you, it's not in the air, you created it. That's what's happening in the week ahead. Yes. Polywaffle bar. What? Yeah, I know. Well, there we go. Hopefully I won't run into too many doors, hopefully, this week. and That'll keep me in line. Yeah, well. Hopefully. Well, there luck. we go, guys. Jess Harris, thank you so much. No that worries. was the week ahead. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
the, the plant. The oh, right, native. yeah, that's what, I yeah. the no, smell don't about it. No, no, so he loves the smell, right? And I can't smell it, yeah. right? And and I was saying that I've bought maybe five or six plants, and every time I, I, my husband will crush the leaf and go, you have it smell, and I go, I just can't smell it. I, I can't smell it. I said to Tim, no matter how I try, I can't smell baronia. He said, Trace, I can't smell Mitchum. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I just thought that was great, but it sort of ruined it at the setup when you went straight for the it, suburb. I should it, have actually told you that at the back. So say, so say, don't ruin yeah, it. It worked better in rehearsal, sorry about yeah, that. It, yeah, it would have. Yeah, that's OK, I won't remember it. <laughs> I will never get a, a job in commercial radio. Uh, that's well, you don't sure. want a job in commercial radio. There's not, I can, if I did a poll here, mm. there's not one intelligent person in this room who listens to commercial radio. You've all got your iPods and you're listening to Triple J. No, you listen to Pox FM. <laughs> so, am I completely wrong? Oh, you all listen to Hamish and Andy, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> this is so cute. Hamish used to write for me. Did he? Mm. Really? Uh, he used to, we, we used to have these... <laughs> there, I've let out my trade secrets. Um, the only thing I, anyone ever wrote for me was debates because we used to do these mini debates every week. Yep. And I just got sick of them too. I mean, honestly, I was such a diva, but, you know, I was an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic, by the way, but I'm sober now. <laughs> so, no, I am. I'm in recovery. I've been dry for six years. But for the, for the five of the six years I was at Fox, I was totally pissed. So, <laughs> so um, or hungover anyway. <laughs> so, apparently I was really funny. What a way to get through it. <laughs> I know. It's fantastic. I, go, I hate this. Oh. And then I walk in the next morning and go, what? And that was how we built the show, because I was so hungover. Did you ever... Everyone thought I was just really funny. I was just angry. <laughs> I've been up going, all night. You were the Boris Yeltsin of commercial radio. <laughs> I did what? I was. <laughs> just, so, apparently it was a really successful show. Um, apparently. But um, <laughs> so after my, when I got sober, I thought, what am I doing? I did the, so I had one year left in my contract when I stopped drinking, and I thought... Wow, I did this, I've done this for five years already, time I got out. And then, and then I couldn't get arrested. So well, then I went to Nano Radio, I got a job at Mix, yeah. and I was working with Tim and it was great, and then they changed management, and then we got someone who said to me, hey, don't you used to be a comedian in that? And I said, um, still am, apparently. But, and then the piece de resistance was they put our picture in a hot chip bucket that they gave out at Monash University, and the guy at Macro said, hey, I saw your, I'm getting in there getting my organic decaf soy skinny latte, yeah. you know, and my, and my organic, you know, cake. And he, he said, my girlfriend saw your picture on a hot chip packet. I said, look at me, organic chip. No, I'm not on a hot chip packet. And I was. And I spoke up about it, and they didn't renew our contract. <laughs> really? Really. Oh, at very least, it could have been on a Chico roll. That's, like, local. Yeah, you know? or me Australian on a motorbike world. going... Because <laughs> no, I've always wanted to be that chick. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I, what a role model for women. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. I grew up staring at that sign in the fish and chip I bet shop you as did. a child. Yeah. That's made the man you see before you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to blame for Chico Rolls, but... Um, what's in them? No Does one anybody, knows. Nobody knows what's in a Chico Roll. No one knows. It's, mm. you know, like KFC's got their 11 herbs and spices. This is just And 11... battery chickens. Don't leave out the battery chickens. Battery chickens, yeah. Yeah. This is Because 11... they're not real chickens. They've got 10 legs and no beak and they live horrible lives. Oh, well, they... Don't eat. Oh, well... Don't ever eat... Which camera? Do... Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever eat KFC. Those poor animals are suffering. They're suffering. The people oh, are suffering. Oh, listen to the support. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Josie, thanks for that. You've been, you've been a great moral compass. Uh, we've just lost a sponsor, but that's all right. Have you um, got sponsors? We don't have sponsors. No. <laughs> I was going to be really impressed. Centrelink's our sponsors. Tracy, thank are you, you so Are much. you kicking me out now? No, we're done. That's all we've got. <laughs> Tracy, we'll be right up to the back. After the break of Dragon and Rowdy. They're touching me. I told you I didn't want to touch I'm you. Sorry, sorry about touching that. touching me. Oh, this is... Yeah. Oh. This has not gone well. Uh... Welcome back to Studio A. And now we've got some words from our very special Studio A sponsors. Oliver? Ooh, thanks very much, Dave. I tell you what, tonight's episode of Studio A is brought to you by cardboard boxes. Storage, a toy, or a shelter, you decide. <laughs> and fortune sandwiches, for when your hunger demands more than just a cookie. <laughs> and chewing gum, it's practice for eating. <laughs> Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks very much. 
<laughs> now, as mentioned earlier in the show, he is suave. Uh, last night was television's Night O Nights, the 51st TV Week at Logie Awards. And believe it or not, Studio A was uh, lucky enough to receive a little bit of an invite to watch the ceremony at Tommy Little's house. And uh, some of us were, of course. Not all of us got the invite, but uh, let's roll the footage. Hey, hey, here we are at the biggest pre-Logies bash in town down here at 158 uh, Tommy Little's house. And uh, I tell you, it's gonna be a fantastic evening. It promises to hold a lot of glitz and glamour and razzle and the dazzle. And I believe we have our first guest coming up tonight. Let's see who it is. It's Tommy Little. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Coming up now, looks like we've got two shining stars of Studio A, Mr. Tommy Dasselo and Carl Chandler, lads. They're looking fine in their uh, outfits this evening, there's no doubt about that. And they're certainly on their way up in their careers. Expect big things, people. Big things. Ladies and gentlemen, Woo! please welcome to the stage your host for tonight. There is some great Charlie at this party. What? Hey. Dasselo, there's no cocaine in this house. If you sniff something in the bathroom, it's probably Omo. Oh, well now that you mention it, it did get the grass stains out of my nose. <laughs> hey, Ali! Go past, buddy. <laughs> You're a cute kid. I'm the host of the show. Nah, mate, can't help you not without your pass. No, you do, no, I'm the host of the show. I know the guys who are running this party. Hey, Carl, Tommy! You're gonna have to move on, mate. You're making a scene. Ollie, do you remember me? Host of the show. And then I thought, wait a minute. This is a night of celebration. This is TV's Night of Night. This is a chance for me to say hello to all of you at home who I have not seen. Mind if I uh, have a beer with you boys? And to catch up. Yeah, sure. I shall not just um, duck off the wood. Many of whom are looking miraculously younger. Not in those shoes, mate. But I live here. No, not in those shoes. Hello. All good, mate? Warming, swine flu, the global financial crisis, but it is not How about this, guys? Logie's Drinking Games. What the hell? We do a shot every time Gretel says something funny. Already, we have had nine presentations of coveted awards. We have many more to come. I'd just like to say to the they've been dignified, they've been great. Don't do that. Okay, new drinking game. We do shots until Gretel looks good. Alright, alright. Three, two, one. Okay, now. Order, the loser, and okay. Hey! Oh, look at my jacket. I'm security. You can't get out of that glass right now. But they're young and they're cute, so let's give it a bash. Another one? PJ. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. No, 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 I just want to go. Best new male talent. But you've been in the industry for quite a long time. Yes, um, I just think it's my first time. Still nothing. Sense, so, uh, <laughs> you don't think Gretel's not looking that great. Uh, no, but Dasselow. <laughs> Mate, I'll tell you what I told Bert half an hour ago. Piss off your moon faced dickhead. <laughs> I'll take my tropical mix and I've heard wipeouts get a Logie's party on. <laughs> I got my tropical, so I don't need those guys anyway. Look, guys, we're going to be after the break here. We're going to have uh, Dragon and Rowdy. He's going to be talking about their brand new Channel 31 show, Postcodes. We'll be right back right after the break. Lois! <laughs> Welcome back. 
back to the Chuckle Fest. Now, our next guests are two hosts of the latest smash hit from the conveyor belt of amazing shows that is Channel 31. It's on Saturday nights, it's called Postcodes, and we're lucky to, enough to have both hosts here this evening, Dragon and Rowdy. <laughs> Now let me just start by saying, some people said to me when I put this outfit on, these are possibly the tightest pants you could muster. Nah. These ones are right here. Can we set up and have a look? Paint it on. Look at this. Oh. Camera ops are hating us right Ladies, now. Ladies, this, uh, this is the embodiment of infertility. We... Uh, I can't even get my zip up. You... Sorry, Mum. Look, this is ridiculous. I put a belt on. It's not even holding these up. Yeah, no, uh, I don't even bother with the belt these anymore. Oh. Leggings. She's got a bit of leg. <laughs> no, mine are still yeah. <laughs> And welcome to the fashion corner down here at Channel 31. <laughs> um, guys, you've got a new show called Postcodes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's it about? Not to be confused with postcards. No, um, that's true. It is, well, you mentioned at the top, Dave, uh, that Melbourne is the now the 18th most of the bull city. <laughs> yes. We came up with the idea back when it was at number one, um, yeah. so it was a little while back. But it's all to do with the fact that there's a whole lot more to Melbourne than just the CBD. The Maybe postcodes. Our thousands. show gives insights in how we've slipped to number 18. Yeah, actually. We're off to, um, <laughs> we're off to Caroline to Springs back. next week, estate living. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah, no, we're going to Caroline Springs. So each week we go to a different postcode. We've got seven EPS, seven suburbs. Um, that's about it. Yeah, just let's check take it out. Around. Kind of well, let's, let's look at this is a bit of a highlight package that we've got here of you guys, of some of the great work you've done. <laughs> let's have a squiz at this. Actually, had all the music also composed for the show, so I have to give a big shout out to Julian for that and Darius for his graphics. From Lab Jacks. Yeah, from Lab Jacks, the guy from Lab Jacks did that stuff. And Darius, he's in year 11, the kid who did all the graphics for that. So Are you serious? Intense, yeah. Really? We should get him on this show, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yours then, are a bit. Mm. And then chain him up in the green room and make yeah. him do all the music for us. This is going to be great. <laughs> exactly. It's good. Guys, you have been, you're not just fresh to 31, so you know. No, no, no we have yes. been waiting in the wings for a very <laughs> long time. Yeah. <laughs> I've been stuck behind that camera just No, there. we crew on Studio A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally someone has come in to fill in for Andrew. Yeah, I was just on camera Rowdy. one, so yeah. Um, yeah, we started. Finally, <laughs> we're on. <laughs> <laughs> we, started, uh, we started working together first on SIN, on the Student Youth Network, the radio station. On the radio station, yeah. Yeah, so we started doing a show there uh, yeah. October last year. Yeah. Um, we we went to school together, actually, that's how we know each other. Right. Uh, we're not married, as it looks like in that clip. Um, and not that you so know of. <laughs> <laughs> I drugged you. That's, that's one of the episodes. Just yeah. like. Ticket to ride. We've got, we've got joint checking passports, accounts and you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we started doing radio, then apparently we got married, and then about halfway through that we started doing some stuff on one of the Channel 31 breakfast shows, uh, Get Serial TV. Get Serial, yep. yep. And then we, um, uh, Talia Rosario, who's now a producer, producer kind of approached us out of that. We're doing some segments there and she yep. said, hey, you guys are cool and great and fun and <laughs> we think that you would be able to make a show. And do you want to do good that? Looking? Yeah. 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 So, so, and get one more. And <laughs> more adjectives now. <laughs> so. Now, you've obviously, it's always hard with Channel 31 to get publicity. Yeah. Well. That's, that's the hardest thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Face like dragons we especially. <laughs> Oh, I, was just, I thought that was kind of comparable to the marriage comment, yeah. but obviously the audience yeah. didn't think so. No. Oh, really one of these days, Nat, one of these days. Um, Bang, boom, straight to the moon. And now, <laughs> you've gotten on to a uh, little bit of MX. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit of it. Oh, well, here we go. Tuesday, April 28th. It Let was a very see. slow news Camera week, I there. think. Yeah. we there we um, go. Got a little bit. And just a... Uh, <laughs> I know. 
That's rather nice. Just to, um, yeah, really re-emphasise the fact that we're not They didn't even want to take married. our photo. No. We, we handed and then, them. boom, we're on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, I was... Don't mess with Dragon Rider. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> One bomb threat and bang, we're on the front. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? But, uh, we, uh, it was a funny old day because... Well, you don't know how I got my nickname. Where? The Dragon, that's what I was going to no, ask. Because no, was... you guys sound like a wrestling duo. Yeah. We're out here, the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we often get confused as well because it's not the most feminine of nicknames. So, but oh. tell, we just gave it to herself, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Did <laughs> and all those people. Did you give it to us? <laughs> yeah. All, I was sick of not having a nickname. So for all those people who want a cool nickname, empower yourself. Just do it. Take it into your own hands. That's what I did. <laughs> and I just have to say, my sister was very supportive. I've just oh, got. Yeah. You may notice I'm going to start signing my text dragon from now on. <laughs> and that, you know, that's going to be the name. And she's gone. That is awesome. And just spread. <laughs> she knows what's hot. So yeah. What is on it? What did she say? The sultry thinks that's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's totally going to be fine. Guys, we uh, When is it actually the show? 9.30 Saturday nights we are. 9.30 Saturday yep. nights. And also repeated 2.30am Fridays. So that's when I watched it last <laughs> week. I think that's where we're going to get the ratings. And yeah, that's really, like... that's where we'll be. Um, that's when you Stoners. know you're a good show on Channel 31. Yeah. You know, Channel, <laughs> Channel 10 will repeat, like, you know, maybe like once, you know, yeah. once a day. But 31 no, like within you. the week. Yeah, but with 31 <laughs> like you, they're like, okay, you're on Mondays, Tuesdays, twice on Wednesdays. And, uh, <laughs> We'll just put you on repeat the whole way through Friday. Fish so, cam, uh, postcodes, fish cam postcodes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to go check it out, guys, check it out, postcodes, not postcards, on Saturday nights on Channel 31. You can see Dragon Rowdy. Where are you off to this week? Caroline, uh, Caroline Springs. Springs. Yeah. Caroline Springs? Yeah, 3023, State 3, Living. Yeah. Yeah. Caroline Springs 3023, represent. <laughs> so uh, round of applause, guys, for Dragon and Rowdy. <laughs> We are lucky enough to have a comedy duo come on tonight. They came to the attention to the world of comedy as national finalists in the Triple J Raw Comedy Competition in 2007. Since then, they've had hit shows last year and this year at the Comedy Festival. They are our first guest comedians whose names possess more questions than answers. Please welcome, guys, the very funny Anyone for Tennis. Hello, my name is Humpty Mao, but people call me Glyn. I live in a small town and I am only ten. I work full time to support my family. I make sneakers in the local factory. And it's, it's normal to work 14 hour days. For seven days a week and for little pay These work conditions do currently exist Human rights groups, they may have mentioned this But you never hear the other views Like how much I love making shoes Yes, that's right, it's been my dream for all my life I took my first baby steps around the home In little booties that I knitted on my own And I am young, that's true But it's what I want to do so Western world, please don't take this away from me. By the time that I turned five, five, I was making thongs on a daily basis. They tied me over till I learned to tie up laces. Then casual and formal footwear followed the next year. And it was then I heard my calling loud and clear. Glam. I told my mum that I wanted to pursue it And she said, Glenn, I've got three words for you, just do it So I did, I got a job making sneakers Can you believe it, making sneakers? It's like a polo shirt of footwear So Western world, please don't take this away from Hello, 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 hello I've always known I could achieve if I maintained my self-belief But in this town that's not as easy as it sounds But I stayed focused and inspired to search for what my heart desired And it felt so sweet to find it right at my feet <laughs> So Western world please don't take this away from So Australia please don't take this away from so Studio A, please, don't take this away from me. Don't take, oh no, don't take, oh no, don't take it away. If you look on the label of life, 
You'll see dreams are made in Taiwan. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd just like to end with one more song if that's right. This one's a, this one's one, a cautionary two, tale. Three, four. shop to buy a lollipop and some soft drink and chewing gum and it came to 4.95 so I paid five and said goodbye she said here is your change I said keep, keep it, it that's okay later that very same day I was just five cents short at my parking meter I went to the bank though then found my car was towed the truck driver then found a shortcut to the impound but ran over a child The kid's parents were notified The father was mad He left work as soon as He cancelled his meeting His colleagues Mike and Stephen Instead went to the pub But Steve didn't know Mike had a drinking problem And Mike's wife called after midnight To find her man drunken She decided right then She would end their marriage Feeling so unhappy She called up her best friend they had a girl's night in and hired Bridget Jones But a man wanted Bridget Jones as well So he missed out and left the store pissed off And killed a pigeon, pigeon who was flying Right back to where it lives To see its relatives for a hen's night those hens night pigeons all chose to wait up But they grew tired and then they flew Into a propeller of a helicopter The pilot got a fright, lost control and nose dived Exploding on impact A man heard the noise it made Walked out his door searching The door shut behind him Isn't that annoying? Take heed of this warning The moral is if you don't Take your change, someone might get locked out of their house. So I'm moving on for Dennis. Hey, go. Yep, there we go, guys. Possibly. No, if, you're all right. Yep, it's. Oh, God. Yep, that. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, possibly some of the funniest but uh, comedians out there, some of the worst tennis players you'll ever see. But, uh, guys, we're going to be right back now with music from Red Ink. But give another round of applause to anyone for tennis, guys. Welcome back here to Studio A. Let's be serious for a moment, okay guys? What else have you got to do on a Monday night? Let's face it. If you're sitting here watching this right now, you might as well come in here and actually see it live, God damn it. That's it. I'm sick of messing around with this. You guys get a better come down here. Come down to the audience. Have fun, God damn it. It's the best night you will have out here, alright? Don't make yeah! me... Don't make me... <laughs> So make me come in there, all right? I will do it. So if you want to come down here and you want to get all the ha-has out, it's very cathartic, it's very fun. All you have to do is email us, electronic mail, at studioa at rmitv.org. I'm not talking to you, Mum, you can say at home. The rest of you come in. So, um, so if you want to come in, guys, we've come to the end of this evening, so I think uh, we should just reflect for a moment and appreciate the people who have come on. That's enough. We, uh, Tracy Bartram, obviously she came down. She was hilarious. I thought she did a good job. Yeah? yeah. She was great. Obviously, we've got a Dragon and Rowdy. They've got their show on on Saturday night. We're going to go check it out. Do, guys. Comedy from anyone for tennis. If you like the cut of their jib, you can Google them, uh, MySpace them, or Facebook them, either which way. You will find out they've got some comedy brilliance coming up live around the Melbourne scene. And we obviously also had regular Jess Harris, who I think all did a great job tonight, guys. Yeah. Taking us out tonight, we're lucky enough to have four guys from Mornington Peninsula who are quickly moving through the Australian music scene. Please put your hands together for Red Ink with their debut single, Audrey. Oh, she's all 
and go check them out, guys. We've come to the end of this evening. Uh, I've been Dave Thorne. This has been Studio A. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what my nanny used to tell me. Uh, good night, sleep well. If you wet the bed, you'll clean the sheets tomorrow. So, uh, <laughs> see you all next week. Bye. It was awesome, man. That was great.